What's poppin'? Welcome to a web exclusive edition of Real Ones. I am Logan Murdoch. That is Howard Beck. It is time to see if your favorite team is real or fake going into the postseason. Time to talk about the Sacramento Kings. Uh, going back to Howard's old stomping grounds a little bit. Go Aggies, I guess. Um, the Kings are an interesting group because last year they were they finished as a fourth seed in one of the worst performing Western Conference finishes in NBA history and one of the softest Western Conferences in NBA history. And now they've kind of gone back down to the mean of what we think that they are talent-wise and also just organizationally there, fighting for a play-in, uh, play-out scenario. And this is an interesting group because I feel like this is a team that everyone wants to play in the first round because no one believes in them. No, despite the fact that they have uh, been able to play well, they have an all-star ca- all-star candidate in uh, Sabonis and De'Aaron Fox, um, but they have not played very well defensively and they are one of the most inconsistent teams in the league much to the chagrin of their coach Mike Brown my question to you Howard can this team find the requisite defensive effort to survive a postseason series it's tough it's tough I'm I'm gonna say it's unlikely that they can find the requisite defense but in fairness I will note this they were a bottom third team in defensive efficiency last year they were in the bottom uh, you know they were in that 20 to 30 range They've been in the middle third, the middle of the pack defensively this season. Uh, Not consistently, but overall, they have shown the ability to be at least average defensively. And I think what the Nuggets showed us a year ago is that if you can be elite offensively and at least average to slightly above average defensively, you can potentially go a long way. Now, that said, the Nuggets were able to build a really solid D, and the Nuggets have have themselves improved defensively this season. Um, Because they weren't relying on Jokic as, as the hub of it, right? Usually you want your center to be your, your all-purpose kind of rim protector, paint protector, and Jokic wasn't that. So what did the Nuggets do? Well, they got Contavious Caldwell-Pope. They got Aaron Gordon. They got all these great perimeter defenders and versatile ones to build that, that stout defense. That's what the Kings kind of need, right? They've, you know, if, if Devontas Sabonis is like junior Jokic, basically, like that's, it's the same problem. And obviously Sabonis is not at Jokic's level offensively, but he's a similar package of scoring and playmaking offensive hub who is not your classic rim protecting center and is not, not as big as Jokic either. So the challenge for the Kings is, is exactly that. And I just don't think they have the personnel as much as Mike Brown is a defensive minded guy. And he's, he's tearing into those guys and has been demanding more and he's gotten more from them. I think at a certain point you hit the limits of your personnel. And I, I completely agree with, with that. They do have the two guys in in Fox and Sabonis, but one of the things that has, and I think the reputationally, their their reputation has taken a hit in terms of their toughness, right? I think um, what defined their season last year was the postseason, would you say, stomp of Draymond Green to Sabonis, and while that was that was a, a ugly. Uh, visual for Sacramento Kings fans in the league at large, a lot of people within the Warriors organization and also beyond took that as a as a sign that the Kings were soft or that the Sabonis himself was soft and that they've never recovered from that series. Reputationally speaking, what do the Kings need to do to kind of push that narrative aside and figure it out in a in a big stage that they hope to be in at some point because that's lingered throughout the season for them is there are is this team tough enough like they do stick their chest out in a lot of ways but when it comes down to it will they actually go toe-to-toe with a big time team when asked to do so I mean in fairness they did take the Warriors to seven games in that series despite everything that happened uh and we sometimes can get a little too caught up in like just the, the machismo and, and all that stuff. Like, does it matter that Sabonis didn't jump up and want to punch Draymond? Does it matter that like, the, we, like we, we're, we're long past the era of bench clearing brawls in the NBA. So I don't know what everybody expected the Kings to do exactly, potentially then jeopardizing their fate by losing their cool in the middle of a playoff series. But I get it. I get it. 
these things are part of the league too. And toughness is part of the league and impressions of, of a team. And if you're perceived as soft, if you are soft, that's a hard thing to overcome sometimes. I don't think like guys don't just change overnight, right? So maybe you need to bring in, you you, know, you need to import the toughness, right? Maybe you just need to, to spend the off season bringing in some guys who, you know, if, if your two stars are not going to be that, you find somebody else to bring a little edge. But in the meantime, listen, you lead into who you are and what you're great at. And this is a phenomenal offensive team that at their best can play respectable defense and that has some young players who are still evolving. But the real thing here is you want people's respect, win a playoff series. There you go. All toughness aside, fights aside, chest stomps aside, whatever, win a playoff series and you'll get people's attention. Which team is scared of the Kings? And if there is no team, how can the Kings use that to their advantage, Howard? <laughs> I don't think anyone is intimidated by them to the point of our last little discussion here. And I don't think anybody's like scared of them. I think people respect their talent. But I also think that if you look at the teams ahead of them, Denver's got better talent. Oklahoma's got better talent. Minnesota, Clippers, Pelicans. And some of those teams have shorter lifespans than others, right? And the Clippers in particular, um, based on age. But, like, I don't think the Kings can even claim to have better talent than the teams ahead of them, which is why – and Kings fans were not uh, real happy when I said this earlier in the season, but I, I I tried to brace people for this. It's one of the rare times I was right in, the, in a preseason prognostication, which is the Kings might be just as good or better – than they were a season ago, but still might sink in the standings because the West had gotten that much better. And that's exactly what happened. Like the Kings haven't regressed. The standings make it look that way, but they're, they're the same team they were. It's just that everybody else got better or got healthier or a combination. And it's just left the Kings kind of slipping by contrast. I think regardless of what happens in this postseason, they've got some work to do in the offseason. And you go right into my second question. Look at you being a pro. Uh, if the if this team loses early in the postseason and it does flame out and they realize that they have hit a ceiling, what is the biggest move that the Kings can do while keeping their core intact? Because they do have a really good core. They De'Aaron Fox and Zabonis have proven that they can they're a really formidable one two combo. Yeah. Um, and they have also have Keegan Murray coming into the fold who uh make a lot of Kings fans and front office guys really, really excited. What is the right move to get them into the conversation of the Oklahoma cities and the Denver nuggets and where they want to be? Because ultimately it may sound funny to a lot of people, but this team has championship aspirations. This team wants to win a title. You ask anybody in that locker room, what's the overall goal? It's to win the big one. How do they get to that point Howard? Yeah, there, this is going to be the first off season. I think we're, in, in this particular iteration of the Kings where they have to really sit back and, and reassess. And look, obviously they did that in a different way a few years ago when they decided to break up the Fox Halliburton backcourt and bring in Sabonis. And that's what launched this, this version of the Kings and got them finally to the playoffs and ended that horrible playoff drought. But now you've hit a, a different kind of ceiling where, where like, where's the next uh, evolution? De'Aaron Fox and Sabonis, they'll probably continue to, to improve as, as, as players, but I think, they're already at that level, right? How much more improvement are you going to get from them? So you, what you're really asking is like, where's the third guy, the fourth guy, the fifth guy? Keegan Murray's got a lot of pressure on him in that regard. And, you know, I don't know that there was, he didn't make a big leap this year as a second year guy. So I, you don't want to put too much on him. He's a young player. Give him some time, give him some room to breathe. But that's kind of the key, right? If Keegan Murray makes a leap, if he becomes all defensive caliber player, uh, an elite three and D player, or even starts knocking on the door of, of all-star. We're having a completely different discussion. Malik Monk is a free agent this summer, and he's one of the leading candidates for sixth man of the year. And if they lose him, that's going to be a big blow to them. And they don't have a lot of flexibility to then replace him. I don't know. They've got a lot of flexibility to maneuver around their two stars in the first place. So I don't know what the answer is this summer, Logan, but I do think these are all the questions they're going to be, be facing pretty soon. You brought up Tyrese Halliburton, and there were extenuating circumstances with that trade, right? The Kings made the unfortunate or fortunate decision, depending on who you talk to, of signing uh, De'Aaron Fox uh, to an, a massive extension, thereby taking away all of his uh, leverage as a piece to 
including a trade for a big guy and keeping Halliburton, depending on who you ask. Um, but how much does the ghost of Halliburton haunt this team? And how much do you think that it will if they continue to have these early postseason losses, um, even despite all the success that they've had um, with Halliburton, not in Sacramento? How much will he linger in, in people's minds when the if or when the clip uh, – if or when the Kings uh, reach an early demise. We'll be talking about that trade for a very long time, and Kings fans will too. Now, if the Kings break through, if they find the right pieces to put around Fox and Sabonis, and they make a finals or a couple of them, or even win a championship or whatever, people will forget about it. People will, like, it will be a footnote. But anything short of championships and or finals appearances, and you're probably having this debate on an almost annual basis, right? Especially if Halliburton goes on to great success with the Pacers, and that is yet to be seen, too, in fairness. So it will always linger, but there were good reasons to make the deal that they made, and it did get them back to respectability for the first time in 16 years. Like, it, they made the playoffs, and they're in the playoffs again. Two playoff appearances in a row. You couldn't say that for a very long time for this franchise. So I think uh, people will fixate on the trade, but I, the results suggest that they made – if not an easy decision, they certainly made a decision that moved the ball forward, and sometimes that's just what you got to do. All right, here we are. Are the Sacramento Kings, Howard, real or fake? Uh, it pains me to say it, but for the time being, they remain fake. This is not a team that I think is probably getting out of the first round. They've got great potential. They're a lot of fun. I can't wait to see what else they can do once they start to retool around their two stars. But if the if the question is real or fake as a contender, I'm sorry. It's tough. This is very sad, but you're fake. You're fake, Zach. I'm sorry. I know Mac Dre stayed there for a long time, and that makes you guys real in some instances, but this is, it's, it's not going to work here. Every team wants the Sacramento Kings and are just – just begging the basketball guys to get them in the first round and have a good chance and think they have a good chance of beating them. Um, and I agree with that assessment. Um, Sacramento Kings are fake. Apologies, but no apologies. Apologies.